Hey, John here. Let's look at how you get text drawn on your pages, okay? Um, making use of everything we've talked about so far all at once here. Let's look at some variables first. Uh, there's a variable called message that is defined as this thing here, which as you can guess from over here must be a text string, okay? How does that work? Well, in PostScript, text strings have, uh, are, are surrounded by parentheses. In almost every other language I've ever heard of, they have single or double quotes, right, with the text strings inside. In PostScript, it is parentheses, okay? So the text string is a period followed by hello world, exclamation point, and so on, with some spaces and some numbers in here. And you can see that's what gets printed out here by this little program. There's the period, all this stuff, and the numbers on there, okay? So that's what we're going to use this thing for. And we're going to use it repeatedly, so I wanted to put it in a variable so I didn't have to type this string out repeatedly all over the program. We have another variable called font height, which I'm going to set to 40. And that means uh, you'll see it get used down here, actually. Um, I'm going to use that to select the size of our font, which is going to be 40 points in height. Okay, so that's what determines the size of this thing. The letting is, uh, that word is a typesetting term that represents the distance between the base lines of each line of text that you would print on a page. So that's this Y dimension right here between these two fiducials, all right? And I'm going to set it to the font height plus 10 points, all right? Just to give myself some space between these lines of text. The position for the uh, X and Y coordinates here the way this works is I'm this variable is going to iterate. 735 is the Y dimension of the non-printed line up here, okay? So you're going to see uh, we're going to start out up here, and then each time we print a line, we're going to subtract the baseline distance from this position Y variable. We're going to put a fiducial there, and then we're going to draw this text message, okay? The position of the X, this is the distance in from the left uh, edge of the page, okay? So this is going to help us uh, determine where the, each of the lines of text go. Uh, this is a procedure that we call each time we're about to print a new line. So let's look at this one a little bit. What happens in here? Well, this is a subtraction. We saw this in another video. We say define position y to be the value that's currently in the position y variable and you're going to subtract the letting value in this case which is obviously 50. so this simply in in a language like uh, python or something it would look like this position y is position y minus letting then we're going to put the x and y position values on the stack and copy them so the stack now i'll have x y x y on it i didn't uh do my verbose version of the documentation over here. I kind of ran out of space, so I'll leave that as a task for the viewer to comment your code uh, better than I did mine. Uh, we will consume one of the pairs of parameters and draw a fiducial, right? We talk about that in another video. Then we're going to call move to, which will leave the current position in the current path it'll set the current position to the same place. So it'll uh, subtract in Y, it'll draw the fiducial right here, and then when the fiducial's done, it'll move the current position there. So if we were to draw lines or, in this case, text strings, they would all start from right in the middle of the fiducials, okay? So what do we then, uh, how does this work? Okay, let's look at how you, 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 you declare what font you want to use. That's this line right here. You put the name of a font in the stack, and you call find font. Let's look at how that works. Let's bring up our favorite ghost script interpreter here and actually do that and see what's going on. I encourage you to do this anytime you're trying to figure something out like this. Just run it. What happens when the first thing is on the stack? Obviously, that puts a name on the stack. We saw that before, right? Here's an operator called find font. What is that thing going to do? Well, obviously, it's going to use this name as a parameter. Okay? Now you'll see that the stack has still has something on it. So what is that? It is an entire dictionary. So a font when you call find font, it goes and finds a font whose name is given 
by the parameter in the stack. It, the font itself is then placed on the stack in the form of a dictionary. It's a whole dictionary filled with variables and values. All right, It's a whole object in its own right with a bunch of fields in it. Then what happens? We put the font height on the stack. Well, the font height was set to 40, okay? I didn't define everything in this uh, execution of GoScript, so we actually have to put the 40 in there. So obviously we now have a dictionary and the number 40 on there. Then what happens? We call the scale font operator. What is that going to do? Well, it consumed something, right? It removed the 40. Makes sense because that's how big we want the font. And it, and it updated this dictionary with all the font information, the characters, and all the size information and stuff that's all in there. It put in the 40 so that when this dictionary is used to draw letters and stuff, the size information is known. So when we get done with scale font, we call set font. Once we do that, it will pop the dictionary off the stack and it will store this dictionary in the current graphics context, right? It's the same thing that holds the current line width and the current color and all this other stuff that we've already seen in all these other videos. So once you've done that, you have set the font and the size of the font that you want to use in the current graphics context, okay? So let's put the events back up here. There we go with all the text messages on there. So that's what this is going to do. It's going to put this courier font at the size of 40 point height in the current graphics context. We then call new line, which we just went over. It comes down here, draws a fiducia, leaves the position right there. We put this string from this variable right here on the stack, and we call show. The show operator pops the string off and then draws it on the page at the current point which was set right here in the new line function. When we're done with that, we're going to set a different font, call new line again, at which point it's going to subtract the 50, the letting, move down here, print another fiducial, and set the current point to the middle of the fiducial, and uh, return, put the string on the stack, and show the new one. So this is courier. This is courier uh, bold. This down here, if we continue down and we see what the, all the fonts are, this is Helvetica and Helvetica bold. Like on Windows, they call this Arial. Now, uh, the reason some of these fonts have different names, uh, Adobe probably was, was first. They go back to the 70s with all this stuff. Um, at least their, their founders did. They came from Xerox, uh, Xerox Park. You can go find a nice book uh, called uh, Dealers of Lightning that'll tell you a little bit about what happened in the days prior to companies like 3Com inventing Ethernet and, and Adobe coming up with uh, PostScript and fonts and characters and, and uh, color spaces and things like that. Uh, I found that book to be pretty cool. So anyway, uh, a little, uh, little editorializing there. Okay, so what are we doing here? Uh, these names are the Adobe names for these fonts. Those, those fonts are actually licensed, and you got to pay money to use them, right? So what happens is GoScript, all us open source folks, don't want to pay that. So GoScript simply took these names and said, well, this is an alias for another font that looks similar to Courier from Adobe, and it acts in a similar way to the Adobe Courier font in that Courier is... Uh, monotonically spaced. It's a fixed width. So any character, no matter what you print, an exclamation or an L or an O or a number, they all use the same horizontal space, even if it's bold, right? The other font, Helvetica, it's just, you know, it's a sans serif font. Again, Microsoft didn't want to pay for the money, so they invented Arial. Or I don't know where Arial came from, but to me, it showed up when, when Windows started playing the font game, right? Um, and whether it's bold or not, actually, you'll see that the, the widths of the characters is different, what they call the kerning. So like uh, an L is narrower than an O and so on. You can read all about that if you want to research what fonts are and how they work. It's a massive world into itself. Uh, I could rant for days on what's good and bad about fonts. But anyway, Adobe guarantees that in a level one, 
environment, the original PostScript environment that you're guaranteed to always have a font called Courier and Courier Bold, Helvetica and Helvetica Bold, and Times and Times Bold, right? So you got your fixed width, your sans serif, and your serif font, okay? In level two PostScript, they added a whole bunch more fonts, one of which is called New Century Schoolbook, which I happen to like because the numbers have these bally things on them like that. So um, when I do a lot of work with... Um, Printing numbers, especially if they're really big, these kind of look old school, right? I guess the new century that they were speaking of when they named this font was probably 1900, not 2000, right? So this is probably a pretty old font. So that's really what this program is doing. This is how you print your 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 text strings on the page. Now, one of the reasons I put these fiducials on here is notice where the text really starts printing here. Just because you say start here where the fiducial is, does not mean that that's where the first character in the string is going to go. Every one of these moves over to the right a little bit. And this will come uh, up to haunt you if you are really concerned about where a specific letter is on the page. If you have a specific location and you want to put an H directly centered on that point, there's some hoops you got to jump through to get it there. And as you can see, every one of these fonts is 40 points in height. And this distance from the fiducial to where they start printing is different for every single font, even the same font with two different uh, settings, whether it's uh, regular or bold, it changes that, that indentation or whatever you want to call it, the advance that you, you, you make in the Y axis before you start uh, drawing your text. So uh, be aware of that. Uh, when you if you're if you're doing super high precision uh, uh, positioning of text strings, so that's all there is to getting text messages on your page. Set yourself up a font, move to a position, put a text string on the stack, and call show. Huh? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye.